Okay, so this video is all about elimination reactions and builds on my SN1, SN2 video. Pretty much any time you have a substitution reaction, you also have an elimination reaction. That is to say, they are in competition with each other, and this video will be all about comparing and contrasting reaction factors that can make elimination favored over substitution, as well as learning the elimination mechanisms. Okay, we start with E1 and its mechanism, and I've just copied the chart for my substitution video over here for easy comparison. So the first step is identical to SN1, a leaving group dissociates and forms a carbocation. The second step is different though. In E1, a base pulls off a beta proton, which then gives its electrons to the carbocation, resulting in a double bond. So obviously that's the main difference between SN1 and E1. SN1 switches out a leaving group for another nucleophile, while E1 produces an alkene. Otherwise, the reactions are fairly similar. Both happen in two steps, and both exhibit first-order kinetics. Their rates are dependent on just the concentration of the substrate. Now, you'll also notice in the mechanism example that the product is 2-methyl-2-butene and not 2-methyl-1-butene. It's an internal alkene rather than a terminal one. And this follows from Zaitsev's rule, which says that the major product will be the most stable one. And stability in this sense means the most substituted, which is why it's a 2-butene, not a 1-butene. One 1-butene one will still be produced, it will just be the minor product. So remember, whenever a carbocation is formed, rearrangement is always a possibility, so just watch out for that. As far as the class of carbon at which E1 happens, it's pretty much just tertiary. Uh, it can happen at secondary, but on the MCAT, pretty much just expect tertiary. There's no overlap at secondary carbons like with SN1 and SN2. As far as leaving groups and solvent are concerned, there's no difference between elimination and substitution reactions, so we don't really need to talk about them in this video. The products, which I already addressed, follow Zaitsev's rule, which means the most stable, i.e. substituted alkene, is formed. As far as nucleophiles go, you want weak ones rather than strong ones, which is a major difference between E1 and SN1, and this makes sense. A strong nucleophile will want to attach to the carbocation, therefore making it a substitution reaction, while a weak one would just rather pull off a proton. Another major difference between E1 and SN1 is that E1 uses weak bases if it uses them at all. A lot of times E1 is acid catalyzed. One of the most common elimination reactions is dehydration of an alcohol, and that's acid catalyzed. And another thing about acid catalyzation is that the reactions often involve heat, so look out for that as well. Heat would indicate elimination over substitution. So that's E1. Of the four possible reactions, E1 is the least common, so unless you get info in the passage on the MCAT that would really indicate that it's E1, it's probably not the major mechanism. Okay, moving on to E2. You can see that we have a transition state just like SN2. Here's the mechanism a little bit bigger so you can actually see what's going on. A weak base gives its electrons to a beta hydrogen, which gives its electrons to the carbon-carbon bond and kicks off the leaving group. The thing about this mechanism, as opposed to E1, is that the leaving group and the beta hydrogen need to be anti-periplanar for this reaction to happen. If you think back to your Newman projections, and look down the carbon to carbon bond, bromine would be in the front and on top, and the hydrogen pulled off would be in the back and on the bottom. That's what anti-periplanar means. So just like SN2, E2 is a concerted one-step reaction, and its rate is dependent on the concentration of both substrate and nucleophile. E2 also happens at primary and secondary carbons, which is the same as SN2. It happens more readily at primary. As I already said, there's no overlap at secondary carbons with elimination reactions. If it's secondary, it's going to be E2, not E1. I mentioned that dehydration of an alcohol is a common elimination reaction, and as you might imagine, primary and secondary alcohols are dehydrated via E2, while tertiary are through E1. Again, we can ignore leaving groups and solvent for the MCAT. Just like E1, E2 follows Zaitsev's rule, so the most stable alkene will be the major product. This also means that trans will be favored over cis. Cis just have more steric strain than trans do, which makes them a little bit less stable. As far as the nucleophiles go, bulky ones favor E2 over SN2. 
If you recall my discussion of steric hindrance or stuff in the way in my substitution video, I said that bulking nucleophiles just can't get around the backside to attack the carbon, ruling out any possibility of SM2. Well, what they can do is get around the backside and get near enough to pull off a beta hydrogen, though. So, T-butoxide and LDA, lithium diisopropyl amide, are a couple examples of bulky bases. And finally, just like E1, E2 reactions often involve heat. So that's it. Really, you only have a few things to work with, presence of heat and nature of the nucleophile, to determine if the major product will be that of an elimination or substitution reaction. So here are a few questions. Pause the video here while you work on them, as the answer slide will appear in about five seconds, so pause it now. And here are the answers. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions about the problems or anything in this video, and I'll get back to you. And pause the video again here if you'd like more time to review the answers. So as far as discerning between elimination and substitution, obviously the big tell is the major product that's formed. If it's an alkene, it's elimination. But I can't see the MCAT people being that kind. So it all comes down to the nature of the nucleophile and how the reaction is catalyzed. Those are the major determinants. And remember, substitution and elimination reactions are in competition with each other, but the MCAT will usually ask you what the major product is, so really get the similarities and differences down.